Good morning. <clears throat> Today is the 27th. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Isaiah 53, 4. The prophecy of Isaiah was that the Messiah would be called Emmanuel, a Hebrew word that means simply God with us. Indeed, when the Son of God came to earth, he became human. In, the very, in a very real sense, Jesus' whole life was an important part of the atonement in his capacity to know rejection, feel pain, and experience the trials of the telestial world. All these things contribute to his ability to feel empathy for his brothers and sisters. In Gethsemane and on Golgotha, Jesus was exposed to the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. There he suffered the effects of the sins, misdeeds, omissions, fears, temptations, sicknesses, and infirmities of all. In this way, he bore our grief and carried our sorrows. Now we can speak of it reverently and mysteriously. Perhaps one day we can understand how this magnificent miracle was brought to pass by the God who became man. Okay, today is Ezekiel 34. And the Lord reproves those shepherds who do not feed the flock. In the last days, the Lord will gather the lost sheep of Israel. The Messiah will be their shepherd. The Lord will make his gospel covenant with them. Um, that's basically what it sounds like. Um, verse 4 says, The diseased have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Now, he's speaking, he's saying the shepherds, prophets, priests, things like that. People who were called to shepherd the people didn't shepherd them and ruled them with cruelty. Didn't do anything to serve the people. It sounds very, very familiar. Um, but, you know, it just goes on to say that if you don't do these things, he's going to take care of you, and then he's going to send one who will be shepherd to all, which is the Messiah. Now, we have the side-by-side -side today, I believe, if I remember correctly. 34, yes. Our responsibility to others. Ezekiel is to reprove the shepherds of Israel whose hearts are focused on selfish things and who neglect the care of the sheep. All who serve in the kingdom of God who should consider their lot and ensure that their interests are centered on charitable serving and helping others along the pathway of mortality pointing them toward the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say, oh, it's the preachers, it's the teachers, it's the pastors, blah, blah, blah. It's you and me, too. We are called as shepherds or ministers to certain people. I have not done my ministry in a couple months at least. It just flits out of my head like nobody's business. Am I under condemnation? You bet I am. Okay. <clears throat> the role of the Savior as the Good Shepherd. The design of the Good Shepherd is to seek out the lost sheep and deliver them to places of safety and nurture, places upon the high mountains of Israel, surely a symbol that points towards the blessings of the temple of the Lord, places where they can be part of the good fold, in other words, gathered to the stakes and homes of Zion where spiritual nourishment abounds and where rest and peace are provided. The imagery is beautiful and grand. The spirit of the language is edified and enriching. And 
and then a summary of the precepts and principles of Ezekiel 34. When Ezekiel prophesied, there shall be showers of blessing, he was looking forward to a time in which the Lord would once more gather his people under the edifying banner, unifying banner of Zion, and I will make them and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness, and I will make them the make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Before that day can come, we will need to learn line upon line, precept upon precept, till we all come to a unifying of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Measuring up to that stature requires unity of service, a unit of hope. I think they mean unity of hope and unity of testimony. testimony. All attributes of Zion people to which in grace and thanksgiving we can aspire. Sometimes when I read through, I go, man, nothing really stood out to me in that. And then you read the commentary and you're like, oh, I should be doing more. That's always what, it, what it's like. I should be doing more. I need to think about, not thinking about, I just need to do my ministering again. I just need to. All right, I'm going to leave you with a prayer from A Diary of Prayer. It's the 27th. Okay. Oh, this is Bishop Thomas Ken. Oh. Glory to thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light. Keep me, O oh keep me, King of Kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, Lord, for thy dear son, the ill that I this day have done, that with the word myself and thee, I ere I, ere I sleep at peace may be. Teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious at that awful day. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right, and that was Ezekiel 34, and tomorrow we do 36. See you then. Bye.